Hello and welcome back. This is David from the Personal Finance Squad. We just finished exercise five and that's where we covered gasoline. How to determine how much I am driving and how much gasoline I'm going to need on a given month. So that way you can uh, make that into a fixed amount. Okay, now we're gonna get into exercise six which is auto insurance. And this is again another tale to owning a car. There's lots of pieces. So if you drive a car, certainly you need insurance. And so we know that there are many companies out there that are willing to provide it. Uh, hence, you can see Geico with the Gecko, and you can see Flo, and there's Farmers, and there's Mayhem, and they're, they're out there everywhere, and they're always competing for your business. So it's important to know that you need to understand what the minimum coverages are based on where you live for the vehicle that you drive or vehicles. So what we put in here is a website that you can use called 360financialliteracy.org. It will list this information. Now, certainly when you speak to a representative on the phone, you certainly need to confirm what that is. That is their job to tell you that. So this is a good guidance and it's probably correct, but you need to check just to make sure. Now, things that you need to consider when getting insurance for your car is certainly the pieces of coverage you need on there because that's going to impact your cost. The more options you have, of course, it's going to cost you more, right? Other things to think about when it comes to coverage, though, with minimum requirements is you may keep a minimum on a car that is older because it's the value check that you may keep a minimum amount on the car because of its value now a car that is more expensive you might have higher limits on it because again it's value and protection you need for that now some other things you need to look at here are certainly gap insurance gap insurance covers the difference between the vehicle's value and and what you owe on it so if you owe 24k and you get your car told at 17 and really the gap is 7,000 then this 7k would be covered because you have gap insurance. So you need to make sure how that works and make sure it covers 100% of the difference between what you owe and what it's worth. And then there's certainly roadside assistance, which is pretty common. A lot of policies are even throwing it in now because uh, they're all just have gotten competitive as a standard thing. Car rental, this is for when you get into an accident. And so that's there for your protection so that you do not have, check that. So you do not have to go to the car rental place and pay for it yourself. It's generally not too expensive on the policy, so it might be worth it for you to get it. Now we see collision and comprehensive deductibles. Oh, um, collision is for like a windshield or an, uh, something that happened like a, a hail hitting the car, a rock hitting the windshield, things like that. Check that. Collision is, check that. Collision, check that. Comprehensive is for when you get a stone to hit your windshield or a hail's ball hits the top of your roof or the car gets stolen and collisions for you know colliding in the cars and getting into accidents and they typically have deductible amounts that are standard numbers so just know that if you get what like they'll say collision at a thousand dollar premium or check that so they'll say collision is at a thousand dollar deductible and your comprehensive is at 500 for example now standard coverages like I get are 500 and 250. The higher this is right here, these deductibles, the lower your premium is gonna go relatively speaking. In a lot of cases, it does not make much of a difference on the policy, so it certainly doesn't hurt to ask, what is the difference between a $1,000 and a $500 deductible? Miles driven to work and each, or check that. Miles driven to work and total miles each year. You can see here that what we're talking about is they want to know how much you're driving in that car. The more you drive, that means more wear and tear in your car and the value is different. And also the more you drive technically means the odds are you're going to get into an infraction of some sort. Good things here though are general discounts. All companies have discounts and you need to ask what they are to see where it aligns with you. So wearing your seatbelt, alarm, maybe where you went to college will give you a discount. Things like that. Whatever they have, you want to get it. If you're a student, if you have a grade point over 3.0, they might say, hey, we'll give a little knock for that. So that is a, a gun. another piece. You just need to ask what they are, and if you don't, they might not necessarily tell you. Multi-car discounts. This means if you have more than one car that you'll get a deduction on that. It's like a 10% um, off your policy as a whole. Now, the other thing is a home ownership policy. If you dual, it's like a dual policy. Usually companies offer both types and again, they'll give you another 10% discount in the range of um, Just because you're doing that now in this case 
you're not looking for a home ownership policy, so they're going to ask you if you want to do that, and you're going to say you just want uh, to get a price on the car you're purchasing that you don't have a home, or you're, not, you're not looking for that. So just make sure you say that when you're talking to these folks. Now, one thing you can do is you can opt not to talk to a representative on the phone at these companies. You can be able to go on, check that. You should be able to go online and fill out the information yourself for what you want, and that way it'll get prices there for you. Now, again, you'll probably get a lot farther along and a better understanding if you talk to a live person. And just remember, you're getting quotes. This is a good exercise for you. You're not obviously going to pay for the policy, but it does let you get an understanding of the type of verbiage that they're using so you're a more educated consumer. So we've get, put a grid in here, as we usually do, and you can use this to determine, again, your comparisons. So you can see right here that we have AAA, we have a premium, which is uh, the term. Premium is $1,400 for the term, which is six months. And now we say in full discount, which means if you pay this in full, usually they will give you a discount. It might be another 10%. Um, a lot of times people don't do that because you have to come up with a whole chunk, of course, which can be expensive for people. Um, most cases, uh, you can pay by month, and there are some insurers who want you to pay the full year. So it just depends where you're at, but on the whole, in most places, you should be able to play, check that. On the whole, you should be able to pay in a month, uh, check that. So on the whole, you should be able to pay on a monthly basis. And then we put in car rental and Rosa. And we put to check that. And we put in car rental and roadside assistance because these are important little factors for you. So fill all these out, see what you get, just like anything else, so you can come up with a number and so you can determine what works for you. And so what you need to understand is if if you have a policy that says it's due every six months, for example, then obviously you're gonna have to come up with a 12-month budget exercise, which is really simple. So if it was $600 for six months, then obviously in your supplemental account would have $100 a month. Some cases insurers will say, you're gonna pay the first, pay first five months and get a skip month. So in that case, you would still do the same type of exercise. You would say, hey, if it's $600 for six months, it is still $100 a month. But what you're going to do is you're going to have $600 really divided by five, right? So if you carry the one there, right, at least you have five, you got one, and then you got five goes into 50, 20, right? So basic math. So what that would mean is you would pay $120 a month to them, and then you would still have some money left over when you get to the sixth month. So the whole point is you're still replenishing in your supplemental account, but they're only charging you uh, five months at a time. And so really you're like getting charges for only 10 months of the year out of 12. Okay, so that's going to do it. So take your time. There's a lot of information to, to gather here. Use the grid that we're going to provide on the website and, uh, you know, make informed decisions. You don't have to make them right away. There's a lot of information again, and you're, you may talk to even up to six carriers. So it's going to take you a little time, but you're going to get uh, more familiar with what uh, it takes to have an auto insurance policy and the types of costs it's going to uh, be onto your budget. Okay, so that's going to do it for here, and we will see you in the next video, and that is going to be the grocery bill. This is another chapter where there's a lot of variable costs and fluctuations that will make it a little more difficult to get a fixed amount, but we will do it because that's how we handle it in the squad. So thanks for joining and we will see you in exercise seven.